Thank you, Lord. Thank you, glory, glory, glory to God. We thank you, hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 We are rejoicing. Amen. Yes. Amen. In him. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Though it's raining outside. Amen. And as I said, nature seems to have taken away the snakes from us again today. Oh, oh, we're going to rejoice in yes, him. Amen. 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 Because we're bound by the word of God. The word of God says that let everything Everything. Yes. 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 Amen. So Amen. we got to praise him whether no nobody else want to praise him. Amen. That's right. I got prayer. Amen. 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 And I'm ready to do the will of God in this house. Amen. 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 So Amen. we said welcome to Personal Touch International Ministry, a place where God came to you. That is to your soul. Amen. 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 Because God is the manufacturer of you and I. You are his product. I am his product. He yeah. knows what we need. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, I told you the Bible study. Amen. There's no medicine yep. for sin. Amen. Yep. Amen. <laughs> there is no medicine for sin. No, there's not. So we've got to be reset back to the factory setting. Yes. And that's God Himself. Oh, he holds the key. Yes, he he does. Got, he's got the disc. He's got the flash drive. He does. Amen. Whatever that is. He he got it. Yeah. He does. Amen. Because I'm 
ministry scripture, amen? Amen. 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 Come from Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. Amen. Let's start reading together at verse 17. Amen. Son, Son of man, man I, I am made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on in here, soul, so we can get to deliver. Amen. Hallelujah. And usher you into the presence of our God. Amen. 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 <coughs> Stuff together here. Mm -hmm. uh, page nine in the green book.
Thompson's, we did that one. We don't have to watch a form of godliness. We don't have to watch a form and a fashion, 
donate to our ministry, please use the cash app. It is dollar sign personal touch three four five one. Amen. 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 Keep talking. Amen. Also, if you're, if you're new here, we have our services as follows. We have Sunday school that begins at 10.30 a.m. We have Sunday morning worship, which begins at 11.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday, we do have Bible study that starts at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. Friday night, joy night service <coughs> will be determined still by Apostle. Communion will be on the second Sunday unless notified otherwise. And as always, we do have shut-ins every other month on the first weekend of the month. If you desire to be here physically, please let Apostle know. Amen. 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 Thank you, sis. Thank you, Mom. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. I, I'm just excited about everything he's doing. In our midst and what he's doing with us, for us, in us, <clears throat> and allowing us to be prepared to do. Amen. 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 So as we do, every time I preach, I'm going to ask everyone to stand with me. I'm going to say this simple prayer. If you're at home, pray this with us and, and mean it when you say it, because I guarantee you, if you ask God to, to speak to your heart and change your life, He's going to do it because yes, he's he faithful. Will. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. Just pray after me. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Dear Jesus, Jesus speak to my heart. Speak, speak to, to my, my heart. heart and change my life. And change my, my life. life. In your precious name. In your, your precious, precious name. name. Amen. 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 Father, I just ask, Lord, that as I bring the word this morning, Father, that you would use me as a vessel to speak to those who will hear. Yes, Lord. Father, and touch hearts and lives, challenge, encourage, but most of all, Change us, Father, to be more like Jesus. Yes. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Make it uh, go by. This, this morning, I'm, I'm going to kind of do a mini retread, but it's actually not a retread in that sense. Amen. Uh, I was going to talk about something else, but God had other plans. So here we are. The, the title this morning is, Why Must I Go? Oh, amen. See, we've talked about going, and, and we, we've talked about some other things, but this morning I'm going to answer the question that is in a lot of believers' minds when it comes to the commission of Jesus to go. Amen. Amen. Everybody wants to know why. Amen. Why should I do that? Why Amen. do I have to do that? Amen. So we're going to look at that this morning. But we're going to look at something else. I, when I've spoken on this subject before, I've talked about it in two different ways. In contending for the faith, as Jude wrote in, in verse, I'm not going to give you a chapter because there ain't but one. So don't think about that. He writes, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, uh -huh. which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Mm -hmm. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord and God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now we talk about what, what that contend earnestly, that word, the, the Greek word is apogenizomai, oh, okay. which means to struggle vigorously. It, it's war language. It's wrestling. Mm -hmm. We're con to contend vigorously for the faith. In other words, be bold. Amen. Don't Amen. run around like kittens when you have a lion inside you. Amen. The, the lion of the tribe of Judah resides in me, so I shouldn't be walking around like a kitten going, meow, meow, meow. I should be roaring yes, yes. and contending for the faith. Yes. Second way we've talked about this is go. Mm -hmm. Jesus speaks, he's very plain. Go, come, listen, hear. In Isaiah 6, 8, 
I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. God calls. Who will go? And we say, Me. Amen. Jesus in Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority. Not just some. Get, get that. Not just some authority was given to Jesus. That's right. That's right. All authority That's right. was given to him in heaven and on earth. Verse 19, he says, go. There's that word. Simple. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Very distinctive things he tells us to do. Make disciples, not members, That's not right. converts. That's right. Disciples. That's right. Second, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them. All right. you, you make disciples by teaching That's them. That's right. That's right. So, so he encompasses all of that and he says, teach them the things I've commanded you and, and I'm with you. If you go, I'll be with you. Amen. And, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today is that, that if I'm doing what God has called me to do, he's going to be with me. I'm not right. by my lonesome. That's right. That's right. I have him with me. So this morning, I'm going to go back a little bit and look at this from the perspective of why. Why do I have to do that? It, it ain't all, it can't be all like that. Why do I have to do that? Far too many believers hear the call to go, and they're told that it's important to contend for the faith, yet they don't know why. That's right. That's right. They have not been given sufficient information that they need to get up off their comfortability and go. Mm. And a lot of folks got a big comfortability mm -hmm. because all they do is sit around on it and not do anything for the kingdom. That's right. That's right. So the question, why must I go? When we think about the call to contend for the faith and go, a lot of people understand the concept, yet they don't understand the why. Again, they, they get this concept, Jesus said I'm going to do this, but why do I need to do that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's not who I am. And especially when we have a modern culture that is so hostile to the gospel. Come on now. Which is the main reason why we do these things. Amen. Amen. We live in a, in a, in a society that hates anything God, that God. has to do uh -huh. with the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. In, in fact, they expect us to just shut up yep. and sit down yep. and, and leave me alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. They expect us, you stay in your lane, let me stay in mine, I'm, and, and we'll be fine. Just don't talk to me about that Jesus stuff. Now, Bodhi Bakum, who is probably one of my favorite modern teachers, he wrote this. This is what he says. Truth is under attack in, the, in modern American culture. That's right. That's Rare right. is the person who believes that there are facts that correspond with, correspond with reality, mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. And that those facts are true for all people in all places at all times. Common, however, is the man or woman who believes that all religions are the same. It's called religious relativism. That tolerance is the ultimate virtue. And that there is no absolute truth. That's philosophical pluralism. Innocuous as their beliefs may seem, they are dangerous. They lead down a path filled with peril. If all religions are the same, then no religion is true. Think about that for a minute. Amen. Moreover, if we believe there are no absolute truths and all truths are equally valid, this will ultimately lead to nihilism wherein all ideas lose their value. If, all, if, if everybody has their own truth, 
then any virtue loses whatever it has because there's no constant. Yeah. Many writes, uh, let me find where I'm at. Imagine that you woke up today and saw this. Many in our culture have been conditioned to sift all religious discussions through the colander of re religious relativism, tolerance, and philosophical pluralism. In other words, all roads lead to heaven. That's right. Well, that's not so, but yet it is, but not like people think. Because no, all roads are going to lead to the judgment seat. That's right. That's right. Well, whether you're on the, the narrow path or whether you're on the, route, the wide path, both roads lead to the same end to stand before God to give account for your life. So yeah, in one sense, all religions do lead to the same place, but all religions aren't going to get the same results. That's right, that's right, that's right. Now, there's only one that is going to get positive results out of that, and, and that's those who follow Jesus. So our text this morning comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Paul writes to Timothy, the young man, and he says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Again, all roads are going to lead to the judgment seat. Preach the word. Those three words should, should be engraved in every believer's mind, heart, and soul. Yes. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. We, we talked about that before. That means if you feel like it or not, always be ready. Peter says, always be ready to give an account for the belief that you have or the hope that you have. Yes. Always be prepared. If someone asks you, why, why are you always at peace? Why is there always joy? And you, even though things are going horribly wrong for you, why do you have this? Always be ready to give them an account of that. I'm like this because of Jesus. So we preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, uh oh, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Do you, do you catch that? Jesus said, make disciples, teaching them. So we should always be ready to exhort, lift people up, convince them with the word of truth. Rebuke them. Rebuke sin. We call sin, sin, whether it hurts people's feelings or not. That's right. That's right. We must give truth with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come. Guess what? That time has come. Yes, see, has. see, for us, we, we can change that will come to has come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from truth, because truth holds me accountable, and, and so I, I don't want truth. The, the, I want something that's going to appease the way I live, and be turned aside to fables. What's the fable? That I can be what I want to be. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. That's a warning. That says you're going to be afflicted. If you're a child of God, you are going to suffer afflictions. But endure them. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. That's not just to Timothy. That's for us too. Amen. Do the work of an evangelist. Well, I'm not an evangelist. I don't go speak at revivals. No, but you go to work. You go to the store. Be an evangelist there. Fulfill your ministry. What's my ministry? Go. Everybody's ministry. If I'm in Christ, my ministry is go. Period. Go. Make disciples. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, 
in the time of my departure is at hand. They're going to kill me because I already did that. But look at what he says in verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I've contended for the faith. I've finished the race. I've run. I've stayed steady. And I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. But not only to me only, but also all who have loved his appearance. In other words, everybody who goes, who answers the call to go and does what Jesus commanded us for do, to do. When God says, who will, shall we send? Who will go for us? And I stand up and say, here am I, send me. And I go to do it. Then at the end, when I get to the other side, when I get to that world which is yet to come, I get a crown of righteousness that God Amen. has laid Amen. up for those who have been Amen. obedient. Amen. In humility. Amen. See, the world needs to hear the word of God. Yes, yes, yes. The, word need, the world needs to know the truth, that there is a truth, yes. a truth. Yes, yes. The world needs to see the active results and fruit of the faith in the lives of believers. So why do I go? So that they can see these things. So that they can hear these things. Amen. If Amen. I'm not willing to go, how in the world do I plant, expect anybody to get saved? Amen. See, the world that we live in today is at war with the truth. That's right. That's right. Amen. The, the world that we live in today hates anyone who makes the claim that there is a truth. That's right. That's right. And to do so calls them accountable for the way they have chosen to live their lives right. according to their truth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We hear this all the time. I want people to know my truth. Uh -huh. Would you just live out your truth? Uh -huh. Well, my truth may not be the truth. Uh -huh. it, it's what I want to be true. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right and that it's true. That's right. That's right. As carriers of the truth, we must go. How are people going to know what the truth is if we all sit around and don't go? Amen. Amen. They're not going to know. They're not going to know. No. They've got to hear it from somebody. Amen. Amen. It's not just going to pop up on screens out of thin air no, and not. show them somebody has to take it. We are those who contend. We are, listen, we're contending for the souls of men Amen. Amen. against an enemy who is bound and determined to steal, kill, and destroy That's every right. human being born. That's right. And as, as children of light, as children of God, it is our job to contend for those souls. Amen. Amen. To Thank speak you, the truth of the faith, to give the gospel to them. Amen. Because the gospel is the only thing, only thing that is going to pull them out of darkness. That's right. That's right. It is the only thing that is going to help them find who they truly are. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I've seen over the last couple of weeks some, some people who had transitioned, who were detransitioning, and they talk about the pain yeah. and, and the suffering that they're now going through mm. because they, they mutilated their bodies. Because they were trying to fit their truth. Mm -hmm. But when they got there, they found out this isn't true. I'm not a woman or I'm not a man. I, I mutilated my body. I destroyed it to the point that now I, I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. the, I saw a clip of this. I don't know if y'all seen this this show. I, I am jazz. Yeah. <laughs> this this boy who who his and his parents. Yeah. Mom. 
are guilty before God because he decided at five years old that he was a girl. And his parents pushed it. And by the time he was a young teenager, he had been mutilated. Now, the, this person is horribly depressed because she doesn't know, he doesn't know who he is. You can only find that in one person, and that's Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's not just that community. There are other people who don't know who they are. Because they have bought into this, this lie, this hatred of truth that says you, you can be your own God. Mm. See, contrary to the ideology of man, God is not tolerant, inclusive, or a social activist. Mm -hmm. Just want you to understand that right up front for those who think that, that Jesus was some kind of social justice warrior because he went around trying to cause conflict between the government and the people and the, all this stuff. He was not a social justice warrior. Just throw that out there. Get that out of the way. His view of man is this. Man is a rebel against his laws. Mm -hmm. Man is a rebel against his statutes. Man is a rebel against his commandments. Man is blinded by the God of this world. Man is a slave to sin and wicked, lewd, and perverted lusts and passions. Amen. That's what God sees. Amen. God doesn't see, oh, I just love them. God love them. No, God looks at them as an enemy, as a rebel. Yeah. And the only solution for this condition is Jesus Christ and his atoning work through his life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. Amen. That is the only hope that people have. And that is our job. That's why we go. We go because we have the answer. Yes. We go because we yes. have the truth. Yes. Yes. We go because we carry hope. Amen. Amen. To a hopeless and lost generation. The only way they will ever hear of this is us. Us contending for the faith against the lies and deceit of Satan and false doctrines that is born of Satan and infiltrated into the church of Christ to deceive the elect. Amen. Amen. Believe me, Satan is at work in the church. He's busy. Very. He's got... He's got pastors all over the place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who are leading the those who, who are the elect, those who know Jesus. Suddenly they begin to hear teachings that, that they've never heard before. And, and this must have some validity because this person ha has gone to school. They got this, this their Reverend Dr. So-and-so with PhD or THD and all this other stuff. So evidently they know what they're talking about. So I'm going to listen to this. And then they begin twisting the word to fit this, this generation, this, this perverted generation in which we live in. But then there are those who have been called, those who have answered the call to go, to proclaim the gospel, the true gospel, to try and draw them out of what they're in. To let them know that there's truth and it ain't what you're listening to, buddy. That's right. Us going to those who need a Savior with the message of hope and deliverance. And we do this. Listen to what I'm saying. We do this knowing that we are going into a world that is openly hostile to everything that we are. Everything that we stand for and everything that we say. When we go into the world, we are, we are going into battle. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And the very fact that the world does hate all that we represent is the very reason why we're to go and proclaim the gospel. 
Because they want us to shut up and sit down. You can't say that name here. You can't put that on your workstation. You can't have your Bible out on your desk. You can't listen to that music on your computer while the guy next to you is listening to, to all kind of garbage. Yeah, yeah. Talking about all kind of perverted and, and filthy things. But you can't listen to that. You can't, can't have on your station pictures of, of Scripture. Because it, it brings to mind, there's a higher law than me. That's right, that's right. And we do this regardless of the consequences that we may face in this life. And here's why. This life is not the one that we're concerned about. This world is not my home. Amen. Matthew 10, 32, Jesus says this, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Now, I want to make a clear, clear statement about this. To deny Christ is just not to speak about him. Amen. If you know him... Amen. And you know what you're supposed to be doing, Amen. and you don't do it, Amen. that's denying Christ. Come on now, come on now, make it plain. Amen. But they told me I can't do that at work. Who are you in line with? Amen. But but I'll lose my my way, my income to feed my family if God is with you, if you're in Christ and you're doing what you're supposed to do, and it's not interfering with you doing your job, come on now, come on now. Christ, God will take care of your needs. I'm a witness. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. To deny Christ if you know him is just to say nothing about it. Amen. Amen. To try and live as an undercover Christian. <laughs> I'm going to fly under the radar. That way I don't cause any waves. But friend, what you are causing is, is multitudes of people who you could be reaching for Christ to not hear the gospel. And if they died tonight and, and you had the opportunity to speak to them the truth, their blood will be on your hands. Amen. But they told me at work I can't do that. Souls are more important. Yes, they are. I'm just laying this out. Yes, they are. Because in verse 34 of chapter 10, in Matthew, listen to what Jesus says. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. Mm -hmm. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. In other words, in my workplace, yeah, there's going to be conflict. Because when I'm talking about Jesus and I'm praising the Lord for everything he does for me. And I say the blessing over my lunch uh -huh. and, and it offends somebody. Uh -huh. That God's dividing those who are his and those who ain't. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because he goes on and he says, For I come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, right. daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. In other words, it goes down to being in your family. Yes, yes. See, even family members want you to shut up and sit down. Yes, they do. Yes, I they don't do. want to hear about that Jesus guy. Yes, they do. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to do my Jesus stuff. <laughs> Whether it offends you or not, because my alliance first is to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh. He is above everything. Yes. Yes. And then he goes on and he said, he who loves father or mother more than me mm -hmm. is not worthy of me. Amen. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Yes. He who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. 
In other words, if you're not willing to put your flesh to death, you're not worthy of him. He who finds his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, Matthew 16, he puts that a little different. He says, whoever desires to save his life. In other words, if, I, if they come to me and say, either quit talking about Jesus or we're going to put you in jail and kill you. And you say, okay. okay. I'll, I'll be a silent Christian. Well, Jesus said, you've saved your life, but you've lost it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now you have mm -hmm. denied Christ. You have Amen. denied what he saved Amen. you to do. He's redeemed you to go forth and spread the word. Not to sit back and rest That's till right. Jesus comes. That's right. <laughs> he's, he's redeemed us to go. And he says, but whoever loses his life for my sake, mm -hmm. for my sake, he will find it Amen. because we have everlasting life. So why are we going? We go because God redeemed us to go. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. We go because the world hates the truth. And so we go to, to blast through that door and share it with them. That we might be able to bring some to deliverance mm -hmm. from the bondage that they're in. Peter writes in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, his special people. Oh, but you can't be his special people if you ain't doing what he called you to do. Because then you're in rebellion again. Amen. Amen. You go back to that place where you were before. Mm -hmm. Because he says his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a holy nation and a special people so that I can go and be a witness to the one who pulled me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I can tell others so we can pull them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because they ain't going to come out without hearing the word. That's right. That's right. He, he says in verse 10, but once we're not a people. We were once just like them. That's right. That's right. We were lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Amen. Until Jesus saved us. That's right. That's right. But now we are a people. Man. We had not obtained mercy, but now we have obtained mercy. He says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. In other words, you, you ain't from here, but you're going through here. That's right. That's right. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. In other words, don't you do what you're trying to tell other people not to do. Amen. Amen. Don't do the things you're trying to pull other people out of. Because you can't be a witness if they see you doing the same stuff. Just saying. Amen. Because he goes on in verse 12, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, mm -hmm. that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the Amen. day of visitation. Amen. Listen. When, when we are persecuted, when they drag us before the courts, it's not going to be because we're Christians. It's no. going to be no. because we're causing problems. That's right. That's right. They're going to make things up mm -hmm. to bring you before the court. Mm -hmm. Just like they did Jesus. Oh. Because it's Jesus they're persecuted. Amen. Amen. It's not me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So why am I going to be the Jesus that they see and Amen. hear? Amen. To carry the word that he has given me, has laid in my heart. See, the worst thing that this world can do to us is actually the best thing they could do for us. That's right. The worst they can do is kill us. 
are mortal bodies. That's right. And guess what? They kill this mortal body. I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus. Amen. So the worst thing they can do for me is the best thing they can do for me. Amen. Amen. They think by persecuting and, and afflicting and putting in prison and, and killing believers is a bad thing. It's not. It's a good thing. Paul says we, we rejoice in our suffering. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because in our suffering, in our afflictions, the strength and power of Christ is revealed in us. Amen. That we can draw men to the cross. Amen. That they may be saved. Because when they see us going and enduring afflictions and praising God. Yes, in the yes. midst of it, yes. then it turns their eyes to where they say there's something yeah. different. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They got something, and, and, and I need to find out what it is. Amen. But because I, if I was going through that, I sure wouldn't be laying in the prison, in the stocks, in the middle, in the yuck muck at midnight singing praises to the Lord. Amen. I'd be cussing everybody in the, in, in the jail. <laughs> but yet here we are, praising the Lord in affliction and enduring it. Mm -hmm. So why do we go? So that they can see that. That's right. That's right. We are merely in this world as ambassadors and representatives. That's right. That's right. See, we proclaim the gospel. And we do this with boldness. We do this with power. We do this with love. And we do this without compromise and without wavering. Well, I'm just not going to address that mm -hmm. because I don't want to offend anyone. I just, I'll stay clear of, of, of that subject. Mm -hmm. I, I'll talk about Jesus in, in every other way, but I'm not going to mention that thing. Because that thing may, may get me, me shut down. I, I can't post about that thing because, because Twitter or Facebook will take me off. So I just stay away from that thing. And that's the thing that God wants you to talk about. That very thing. Yes, sir. See, it's the things that the world holds as their idols, and it changes with time. It, they change the things that they're pushing as their golden calf. They change it like most people change socks. This generation is one thing. The next generation is something else. So, so if I try to avoid golden calves, even within the church, yeah, I said that. Amen. And then I'm not going. I'm, I'm not doing why God sent me. That's right. Because God sent me to challenge these things. To speak truth about these things. Amen. See, and, and we have <clears throat> we have precedence for this. Second Timothy 2.15. Paul tells Timothy, he says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. I shouldn't need to be ashamed. Amen. Amen. I should always be bold in the word. That's right. And, and I should always be able to stand before God's people knowing that I'm, I'm diligently studying and diligently in relationship with the Lord so that when I stand before them what I'm speaking is right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry if I've twisted something. That's right. That's right. That's right. And there's a lot of preachers who are twisting stuff and they don't even realize it. And there's other preachers that are twisting stuff because they want to. Because they're trying to appease the sin that not only is in them, but that is in their congregation. Amen. Amen. But he says, rightly dividing the word, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Look, you listen, you, 
just go on YouTube sometime and, and, and pull up some of the crazy stuff that is being preached and taught in some of these churches. See, I do this because I want relevancy. When I'm preaching, these are things I want to, that God's called me, not that I want to, but God's called me to address. Amen. To, to hopefully warn someone, don't listen to this mess. That's right. It is garbage. But you just go in there. Ten minutes. You, you can mm -hmm. find 20 different things in 10 minutes that would just baffle your mind at some of the things people are preaching. Yeah. yeah. Study just comes up. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And then you're like, oh, God, get me off of here. Yep. But that's what has happened. That's what Paul says here. For, for they'll increase more ungodliness as time goes by. And that's what we're seeing, this, this exponential increase in ungodliness. Yeah. Even in the church, yeah. which is the saddest part. Yeah. And their message will spread like a cancer. And then Paul gets direct. He says, Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort. Oh, Paul called them out by name. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Well, you ain't supposed to, to touch God's anointing. <laughs> Hymenius and Philetus are of, of this sort. Mm. So, so when I stand up here and I say, Copeland and, 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 and Creplo and, and TD, are, they're of this sort. I ain't doing nothing that, that Paul ain't doing. He's directly telling you, don't listen to these two because they're of this sort. They've strayed concerning the truth. Oh. Amen. Amen. Oh. Paul touched God's anointed. No, he touched people who don't know what they're preaching. <laughs> they're liars. They're deceivers. And Paul said, these two are just like what I'm telling you. So don't go into their churches and preach. Stay away from them. Because they're preaching that saying that the resurrection is already passed. And they overthrow the faith of some. There's people out there, and, and it's not just about that. Any doctrine that is not true. It, it causes people to be overthrown in their faith. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And you don't need to be overthrown in your faith. It's hard enough to walk in the faith regularly with all the other battles that we have to deal with without listening to some clown telling you something that ain't true. That's right. Amen. Amen. And letting them shipwreck your faith. So he goes on and he says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Even though these two are, are speaking doctrines that aren't true, the, the solid foundation of God stands. In other words, the church is going to stand That's regardless right. of That's what right. these false teachers are doing. That's it right. can't shake the foundation yeah. of the body of Christ. That's right. It's going to endure. It's going to grow even in the face of all of this. Yeah. Even though the world hates That's Jesus, right. Right. the church is going to yeah. grow. Yeah. Even though the world persecutes me as a believer and may put me in jail, the church is going to That's grow. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because the church thrives yes, sir. Yes, in sir. affliction. Yes, the church thrives. In persecution. Yes, sir. It was born in persecution. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it will continue to grow. Yes. Yes. In persecution. This is why I get frustrated with folks who teach this. Oh, we're going to be rescued out of here and not go through hard times, go through the tribulation. The church is supposed to be here in that time to grow Amen. and to Amen. save people in the midst of of the worst time that this world will ever experience. Mm -hmm. The church is the beacon of hope in that time. Amen. Amen. The greatest revival the church will ever see will be in the midst of the great tribulation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And praise God, if we're here for that, 
and we go through that affliction and go through that suffering and go through that persecution, we say, glory be to God yes, Lord. that I'm sharing in the suffering of Christ, that I can carry this message because this is what I was saved to do. I was redeemed to do this. Lord, are you getting it? Amen. Why do we go? And you'll hear a lot of people in the world say this. Well, God is love, and if you loved us, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't talk about these things. You, would, would, you wouldn't discuss it. You wouldn't call my lifestyle sick. If you loved me, well, I, I, have, I have something hard to say. 1 Corinthians 13, 6, mm -hmm. Paul's talking about true love. It does not rejoice in iniquity. That's right. In other words, it doesn't rejoice in lawlessness, in sin. But rejoices in the truth. Amen. Oh, well, God is love. See, and here that blows all of everybody's thoughts out of the water where they say, well, God is love. He loves us all. Because he made me this way. No, he did it because true love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. All right now. All right now. So, so God's love does not rejoice in your sin. That's right. I like that. I like that truth. Thank you, Lord. God's love demands change. Yes, yes. If I expect to reap the benefits of God's love, there must be transformation. And that only comes in Christ Jesus, yes. which is why I go. Because somebody's got to tell them That's right. That's that all this stuff where they're being told God loves you just like you are. No, he don't. Because he doesn't love iniquity. That's right. Amen. He doesn't love lawlessness. First Timothy 4 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, which is where we are, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now Jesus. Jesus, in, in Mark 13, he, he hits on this. He says, then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, he is there, do not believe it. Mm -hmm. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed. See, I have told you all things beforehand. In other words, Jesus told us, look, there's going to be people that's going to take my word and they're going to twist it. They're, they're going to they're gonna pervert it. And they're going to tell you that what you're doing is okay. That's right. But it's not. And because of this, many are going to leave the faith. So why do I go? To tell those who are being shaken by false doctrine to get right. See, we read this every week. Ezekiel 3, 17 through 21. says, if I lay a stumbling block before uh, uh, the wicked, and, and I tell you to tell them to stop sinning, and you don't do it, and they die in their sin, they're guilty of it. But you're going to be the one whose blood answers for it. That's right. You're, their blood is on your head. Their blood is on your hands because I sent you to them and you didn't tell them. You let them go on because you didn't want to offend them. I ain't talking about that. That's a delicate subject. That's controversial. Mm -hmm. So I'm staying away from it. Mm -hmm. And they die and go to hell. And then I stand before God and he's going to go, well, why did I, I put you in their path? I sent you. You told me, here am I, send me. So I told you to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. 
I redeemed you to go. And I gave you the opportunity. And you walked away. Yeah, yeah. Now their blood you're going to have to answer for. My Lord, my Lord. Man. Then it says, if a righteous man, those who fall away, yeah. those who hear deceptive doctrines and they turn from the faith. If a righteous man turns from, from the faith, I send you to them to get them to come back to try and rescue them right. from, from where they've gone to. And you don't do it. That's right. That's right. Not only will they die in their sin and them pay for it, but the blood is on your hands. The only way that, that you stay safe in this, the only way that, that we, we save ourselves in this is to go and do what we were told to do. Hallelujah. The thing that we were redeemed to do. And that is to call them out of sin. That's right. That's right. And to call them or to call them back to holiness. Amen. Amen. If I truly love my brother, my sister in Christ who has fallen away or who has begun thinking and, and listening to crazy doctrines and, and I see them slipping and I don't confront that. I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. why do I go? Because I don't want to be guilty. I don't want to be guilty before God. Mm -hmm. When I stand before him, I want to make sure I, I have answered the call. I have, I have fought the fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith and I've Amen. contended for it Amen. vigorously. Amen. I. Yes, sir. I love that word. I, I wrestled for it because I wanted to bring people out of that. Amen. But we don't have to become like the culture to do this either. That's right. That's well, right. Paul said that I've become all things to all men so that I might say something. That don't mean... That's right. Say it, Elder. Mm -hmm. Say it. <laughs> That don't mean that, that he was going to a drag show and he dressed in drag so he could <laughs> say some. No, yes, no, sir. No. Say so. That, that don't mean that, that if I was going down to the club to, to talk to my, my, my girlfriends that I dress like a hooker. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Let's make that plain. <laughs> All that means is I'm able to talk to those that I'm going to minister to. That's right. That's right. I'm able to speak to them in terms that they understand without compromising the truth. Amen. Amen. I don't have to look like them. I don't have to smell like That's them. Right. That's right. I don't have to act like them. Thank you, Lord. Thank because you. they need to see the difference, not the similarity. That's right. That's right. They Amen. need to see the holiness Thank of God, God. not, yes, not yes, me sir. getting as close to the line as yes, I can sir. without getting burned. Yes, sir. See, there's a lot of people, they get as close to the fire as they can. Mm -hmm. And hope and pray that their clothes don't catch on fire. <laughs> but that's not what we're called to do. That's right. We're called to shine forth the light in darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank and, and here we go again. Why, why do I go? And why is this important? Matthew 10, Jesus tells the disciples, and he tells us to, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm sending you out innocent amongst people who hate you. That's right. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Use your brain. Let the Spirit lead you, but, but be gentle. Amen. Amen. But beware of men. Uh oh, why? Because men hate me. That's right. That's right. So they're going to hate you. Amen. Amen. For they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake Amen. as a testimony to them. Oh, so why do we why do we endure afflictions and persecutions and trials? Because they're going to bring us before people to give us the opportunity to share what Christ has done for That's right. me. That's right. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Paul goes before I 
can't think of the guy's name now. He goes before the Roman leader, mm -hmm. Gaius, I think. Um, and, and he tells him, he says, but why do you think by now that by telling me these things you can make me become a Christian? King Agrippa? Yeah, King Agrippa. And, and he tells him, he says, not only you, but all who would hear my voice. In other words, I'm in these chains for this very purpose. I came to Rome in chains for this very purpose. To share, to witness, to testify of this Jesus who saved me. Mm -hmm. And not only you, but I hope that everyone who hears me comes to know Jesus. And, and in fact, in another place in Acts, Paul says, or in one of his letters, he says, there's been many who, who have been in the household of Rome who have come to know Jesus because of my chains. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Therefore, I rejoice in my sufferings. Yes, sir. Oh, that we have that attitude. Amen, amen. Why do we go? To be a witness, yes. to be a testimony yes. of who Jesus is. And, he's, and he goes on and he says, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you're going to speak. Amen. Don't rehearse it. That's right. That's right. Don't sit at home and write your testimony out a hundred times and memorize it. Oh. So, so that when you go before somebody, you can per 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 verbatim regurgitate your testimony. That's right. He says, don't do that. He says, for, for it's not you that's going to speak. Because in that moment, the Holy Spirit will give you what you're to say. Because those people that you're talking to at that moment may not need to hear your testimony. They need to hear his testimony. Yes. They need to know about him, not you. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will give you those words. So don't practice. Amen. Amen. Just be ready. Be set. Yes. And then he goes on and talks about how a brother will deliver up brother. Father will deliver up his child. Children will raise up against the parents and cause them to be put to death. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you will be hated by all, not just some. That's right. All men who are not in the body of Christ will hate you for my sake. Amen. But he who endures to the end will be saved. In other words, if you keep on trucking, yes, sir. if you run the race, yes, then sir. if you keep the faith, if you fight the fight, and you endure to the end, you're coming to glory. Amen. 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 Not, not one hair on your head right. will be out of place. That doesn't mean that they won't kill us in this life, but what he's saying is, because you're coming to glory. Mm -hmm. Your body may die, but you're coming here. Because I've got you. Amen. I'm with you. Amen. We go because God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's why we go. Because people need to know that. But they also need to know that God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. You're already condemned. You, you hate God. You hate Jesus. And, and you think all's good and you're going to. No, you're not. You're condemned. You were born in a state of condemnation. Yes, we were. And the only hope for that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the world hates Jesus. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. But men love darkness more than the light. Because the light exposes their evil deeds. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to come into it. We go to tell the truth, to expose their dark deeds. Amen. Amen. That they may understand 
I need a Savior. I can't save myself. Amen. Amen. Hmm. The biggest lie that Satan has told man is that he can be his own God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what we're here to tell them is you ain't your own God. That's right. Now you can be your own God, but you can't save yourself. That's right. And most of mankind is their own God. That's right. That's right. They, they love themselves. Everything they do is based on me. Amen. Amen. What I want. That's it. What I want. Like them little babies. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day at lunch. And I told him, I said, if you want proof, that man is born wicked. Look at a baby whose only desire is what they want and what they need. That's right. Ah! And they'll cry till they get it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bodie Botham calls them viper in a diaper, and that's exactly what they are because that is the purest essence of the wickedness of man is in a baby. Wow. You see it. <laughs> Amen. And there will be people saying, that man is calling babies wicked and evil. They are. They were, they were created. They were conceived in sin. They were born in sin. That's right. And as they grow, some of you parents, as they grow, you continue to, to appease them and they just get worse and worse and worse as they grow. And you have to do more and more to appease their wicked wants. Until suddenly, as a teenager, they're stealing stuff, doing things that they shouldn't do. And they end up in juvenile. Or they become a young adult and they end up in prison. Yeah. And it's because we have fed their wants. To shut them up. Mm -hmm. That's what Satan does. He appeases the flesh of man. With what he wants. So that we get worse. And worse as we grow. And the only cure for that. Is the blood of Christ. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. See now if you're in a godly home. And you raise your children. And you tell them No. Every once in a while. That's right. And you punish them if they do something wrong. And that means whoop them every once in a while. That's right. If they need a spanking, give them a spanking. Woo. Sitting them in the corner ain't going to fix it. Sure <laughs> Definitely not. Because understand this God chastises those he loves. As a father chastises his children whom he loves. If you don't check, now I'm not talking about beating a child, I'm talking about spanking. There's a big difference. <laughs> but children need discipline. Amen. Just like believers need discipline from God. And they need discipline from leaders that he has placed over them. It is our job to confront sin. Amen. 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 That's why we don't shy away from talking about sin. Y'all talk about sin all the time. That's right. Because some of y'all need to hear it over and over and over. And we do it without fear because we haven't been given a spirit of fear. That's right. That's right. You're supposed to have a spirit of boldness, power, and love, and self-discipline. And true love doesn't like iniquity. That's right. But it rejoices in truth. So when my family member, that adulterer in the family, Comes over to the house, wants me to go somewhere with him and his, his girlfriend. I say, no, nah, ain't doing that. Yeah. But I thought you loved me. I do. But me going with you and her says I condone what you're doing. You better say that and again. I ain't doing that. Say it again. See, here a, a few months ago, now I'm going to pick on 
famous people. Amy Grant had one of her kin who's in the LGBTQI Legion community get married. She went and supported the marriage because it's family. By doing so, as a Christian, you have just said, I condone this That's behavior. Right. That's right. That's right. You can love someone without taking part in their sinful stuff. So true. So true. Amen. And you can tell them, yes, I love you, but what you're doing is a sin. It's an abomination. Yeah. And if I come, I am putting my mark of approval on that, right. which means I'm saying that God approves that, Hallelujah. and that ain't so. That's right, that's right. So I cannot do that. I cannot come and support what you're doing. Amen, amen, point blank. Mm. So why do I go? To let people know these things. I'm almost done. So the answer of why we go, regardless of the cost, because God did not redeem us to sit on the pew on our ever-growing comfortability. Amen. About the nicest way I can put it. He redeemed us to glorify him by sharing the gospel with all those who are in our circle of influence, making disciples. We go because that's the fruit of redemption. Amen. Amen. I like that. We go because it's our reasonable service as living sacrifices. You don't believe that? Read Romans 12, 1 and 2. Lastly, we go because we're compelled by what Christ has done in us. To tell everyone we can. No one. And listen to this. If you don't hear nothing else I say. No one who has truly been transformed by Christ. Can go without telling others. What he has done in their lives. Amen. If they can go on with life. As if nothing has happened. To transform every aspect of their lives. For the glory of God. Chances are. Nothing has happened. So. Amen. 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 That's about, that's, that's the rubber meeting the road. If, if Christ has redeemed me, pulled me out of the blackness of sin, and he has changed my life, it doesn't have to be some great testimony of I was I was a drug addict and did this and no, did that, was in no. prison. Look, you were lost. Yes. Now you're found. Amen. You were Amen. blind. Now you see. Yes, yes. You were dead. Now you're alive. That's glory enough. God pulled you out of a world of sin, a world that is unholy and made you holy and he placed you back in an unholy world to keep you holy so that you can tell others about what he did for you yes sir yes sir yes sir god i love you too. so why do i go because he said so that's right that's right do you want it in in plain short version why do i go because he said so. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what parents always say. Mm -hmm. When I ask them, why do I do this? Because I said so. Well, God is your father. Yes, he is. You think he would tell you to go do something that, that his son hadn't already done? Better say so. Say so. See, Jesus told us, he said, they persecuted me, so they're going to persecute you. That's right. If they hated me first, they're going to hate you. So, so they're not treating you any worse than they treated me. <clears throat> and, and, and it's not you. They're persecuting, by the way. It's me in you. Amen. Amen. 
So when they kill you, they're trying to kill me again. So you go because we were told to. That is what we're expected to do. 